hack. It's a word that is defined as unauthorized access to customer servers or network devices. A word that we fear in our society. Where every day, if we get an email, like casual email that just says, that just says, hey, please reset your password because our server has been compromised. Or it says, our network might have been compromised, so we request you to update your user details. That moment, we realize that our privacy is no longer private because it has gone to the hackers. For in our society, hackers are shown as bad individuals. Individuals who work to make malicious changes in the society, create rampages, creating various other drastic events. However, these are not the always type of hackers. And these are not all the type of hacks that we see in corporate servers only. Because our government and our national security is also dependent on hackers. What if I were to tell you that as I'm giving this speech right now, there are hundreds or thousands of hackers from around the world attacking the national security of this nation, attacking the central national security, the Department of Defense. This hack did not start today or this morning or a month ago. It started a year ago in May 2016. However, it looks like hackers are bad, hacking to the government, leaking data. But I call, I take in pride when I say that I'm one of those hackers who hacked into the Pentagon about a year ago. Starting with when the Secretary of Defense, Mr. S. Carter, launched a unique program first time in the United States history and called it Hack the Pentagon. A program that was unique in itself because it rose a lot of media attention. And for me, it was a dream come true. Because as a high school junior student in 2016, as I sat in my computer, in my comp sci class, I was programming a web application. And then I saw this news that says the DOD is asking hackers to hack them. And it was a dream come true. Because as a programmer, whenever I'm programming something, and when someone asks me what I'm doing, I say that I'm hacking the Pentagon. It's a joke, but this time, it was a reality. So I opened the application that the third party firm HackerOne had, which was working with the DOD for this program and I decided to apply. But as I was applying, I asked myself, am I really capable for this? Because there are hackers in the United States, software engineers, security analysts, from various companies that will be applying to this program. So I said, will this ever be true? Or will it always be a joke for me to just say, hey, I hacked the Pentagon, or I'm hacking the Pentagon? And I applied, waited for a week and two weeks, and I didn't get an email. But suddenly, the third week, I get this email where I'm told by HackerOne that I have been invited to hack into the Pentagon, and this program will start from 12 May 2016 for a month till April 2016. Now my dream was finally coming true. A person who was just joking around a month ago saying that he was hacking the Pentagon will actually now hack the Pentagon. But I didn't know much about cybersecurity then. I was just basic. And then when I was starting it, I decided that Hacking the Pentagon won't be a joke. It will be real, and threats will be surrounding me. So I decided to learn and practice. And at that time, I learned a special message while participating in this program. Hacker One sent out an email for all the hackers, and it said, together we hit harder. And this was a message that hit me, because this was the first time in the United States history that the Pentagon has launched such a program, or even the US government. Because before, if I actually hack the Pentagon, I'll not be here right now. I'll be somewhere in prison. So this was something that was true and legit. And especially, I liked the image that was sent by Hacker One, where they showed a robot beating up a bug. So I decided to train myself, because I still had a week left before the program started. And as I trained myself, I learned various cybersecurity concepts. And at the end, in April 2016, Hacker One and DoD launched a public release, a press release, with the media in the Pentagon where they disclosed all the results of this program. I knew that some of my bugs were valid and they were triaged and fixed, but I didn't know what my standing would be, and I was really eager to know what it would be. So when the results came out, I was shocked. Turns out, 1,410 hackers were invited by HackerOne. That is really a huge amount for Pentagon to invite so many hackers. And my standing? I was ranked 10th 
out of 1,410 hackers. And also, only one of few high school students that were participating in this program. So it was a dream come true. A year ago, I would not have told anyone that I was a Pentagon hacker. But as, as I stand here, I call myself a Pentagon hacker. But what happens when a government launches this kind of programs? It was a pilot program, so the DOD did not know if it was going to go south, if someone will hack the Pentagon, and will never report it. But the results that showed out, saying 138 reports being valid, that put national security at risk, made DOD and the US government realize that a change had to be made and that can be done by uniting, by engaging hackers, good hackers, and showing their examples to the society. So, three months ago, the DOD launched a program where, as I said, not only 100 hackers or 1,000, there will be many hackers because they invited the whole world from different nations to hack into the Department of Defense, launching a program that was called Department of Defense Responsible Disclosure Program where they asked hackers to find vulnerabilities in any military websites that could have critical systems on it or just be basics. So now the question is, can these hackers actually do good? Because we are thought, we think that these hackers, this community can make a bad impact. But what if I were to tell you that one hacker found a vulnerability that allowed him to get access to the server of one of the military sites and update whatever he could do or do any actions on the server? He did not take harm of this. Instead, he reported this. And this hacker was Sean Mills. When he reported this, DOD had a time where they had to go on a quick path, take down the server, and make sure no one had impacted it. Now, it's not just the government. It might be the first time for the government to launch such a program, but it has been going on for years, from Facebook, Snapchat, Googles, to various other companies launching these kind of programs especially through firms like HackerOne, BugCrowd, and various others who act as medium to engage this community to be together and hit it harder and make this society safer. I want to ask you all a question here today. How many of us use web applications like Uber? I'm pretty sure many of us do, because it is one of the most commonly used applications in our society, where if we want to go somewhere, just get an Uber and go. And what if I were to tell you that a hacker found a way to change your password without you knowing, and these are not just sending you an email. He could just change it through Uber's own program, and even Uber won't realize it. Pretty bad, right? Well, thankfully to this hacker being a good person, he reported it to Uber. And next thing he knows, he's rewarded a big amount, $10,000 by Uber for his hard work. Not only that, going through businesses on how they work, a community chat group like Slack, which is used by businesses to share confidential data, were recently found vulnerable by one of the hackers in the platform. He found a way to intercept the emails that was being sent by various companies to their messaging teams and get access to confidential data. And here we see the results. Slack fixed it in five days and the result was live. Now, why does it matter in our society? We're not always gonna find, we're not gonna be hackers, right? Not everyone is gonna be hacker. But it's always important for us to hit it harder and make a change. Because right now, we are surrounded by Internet of Things, or known as IoT. We have devices in our hand, cell phones, computers, printers. We have devices at our home, and even our cars. What if I were to tell you that there is a way a car can be hacked, its GPS to be controlled, and later on, its whole system to be taken over? Here's an example that shows an industrialized vehicle like truck being controlled by a hacker where they're able to get its exact location and if exploited further, they can take control of the whole car. Risky. Not only that, moving on, even our IoT devices that are used by government and various other companies are vulnerable. Here we can see a water facility being compromised where a hacker can literally command whatever he wants to the facility. So he can do various other impacts. Now hacking might be something that we know of. Hacking might be something that requires an organization in the community, but the code together we hit harder, does not only go with hackers. It goes with us, a society that wants to make a change in every single aspect that we live in right now. For us to be better and sustain in 21st century, it's better for us to use this code, be a community, and make a change. And for hackers, let's them ha let them hack and make the bug lose by making the hackers win. Thank you.